Hello guys, time for our monthly tradition on this channel. So here you see a video, Laravel tips for August, time for Laravel tips for September, which I collect, curate and pick from Twitter every month. So in this case, there will be 12 tips on random topics with Laravel. Let's dive into the first one. And this is a tip from myself. This is first or create. Not sure if you knew that in Eloquent. So if you need to check if the record exists and if it doesn't, then create one. This is a function first or create. But also what I wanted to emphasize in this tweet is sometimes AI, if you asked AI to generate the code, it uses the code structures that are not necessarily the shortest, not necessarily the best according to your preference. So AI may generate working code, but this is one of the examples why you should double check and reprompt or fix manually. That said, the code above isn't wrong, so you may even prefer longer code which is maybe more readable. So it depends on your personal preference. The next tip is about PHP and it comes from Chris Morell. Did you know about array column function in PHP? So look at the example, you have the enum, you have status cases, which is array, and you need to get the array of values of specific array column. So I have reproduced that scenario on a website called PHP Playground, and this is the actual value of that array of status cases. So value is one of the columns, so it's array of two levels. So if you need just the values of those, there's array column in PHP demonstrated by Chris in this tweet. The next tip comes from myself and it's not even a tip, it's more like a recommendation of a tool. So if you work with API and you want to debug SQL queries, the typical way would be Laravel debug bar, but this is a package for websites where you can use the debug bar at the bottom of your page. But what about non-visual debug bar? And for that, my advice is to use Laravel telescope as one of the options, which would show you the queries, something like this. So among all the menu items of telescope, one of them is queries, which will log all the queries from this, for example, postman request, and will show you those with specific values and even with ability to debug each query separately with more details of duration and other stuff. The next tip is actually a piece of news from Pushback, who works at Laravel core team now. Starter kits now have two-factor authentication, finally. Taylor promised that quite a while ago, and it's finally live, using the same Laravel Fortify under the hood, as it used to be since Laravel 8, from what I remember, in Jetstream as well. I haven't tried it myself, and I'll probably review that separately in a separate video, but for now, it seems like all the starter kits, React, View, and Livewire, have two-factor authentication enabled. The next tip from myself again, and I started retweeting older tweets, which were popular, so from 2023, but it's still same syntax and same logic. If you have database transaction and you need the result of that transaction for further processing, you have basically two options. You can use and syntax as a variable parameter if you have that from somewhere before the transaction or in the callback function, just do return and then assign that return to any variable which you can proceed later after transaction. Kind of a small, quick, maybe even obvious tip, but when using database transactions, I needed that many times in the past, so some of you may not know that. The next tip from Gurmandeep, it's also about array, but in this case, helper method of Laravel, not PHP, there's has all. And I really like the tweets and tips that show the example specifically with specific data, so that would be clear what it actually does and doesn't. So, array, does it have a name? True. Does it have all name and email? Yes, then name and even two levels deep. Profile age, true. But name and phone, as you can see, there's no phone in the keys here, so that would return false. The next tip comes from myself. After reviewing the code of Laravel IO, I noticed one very simple way to manage roles. So in four screenshots, I decided to show it on Twitter. So in the users table, there's type column. So just a number, no spicy permission package, no foreign key, nothing. Then in the user model, those numbers are assigned as 
constants. It may be enum as well, but in this case, it's constants. Then also in the user model, it has some helper methods, which makes it more user friendly if you use it outside of the user model and how it is actually used outside of the user model in the policy. It goes like this. User is admin, user is moderator and others. So this is one of the most simple setups for user roles, which probably will be static in this project, rarely changed. Of course, you never know. But if you do need new role in this setup, you just probably add more constants here in this list, and you don't need database changes probably at all. The next tip comes from Anicat and he's presenting a new function released in Laravel 12.30, which is ordinal position for placeholder. Look at this example for validation. This is the zoomed in version. So imagine you have this request or input and you have the error in the second item on the list. But as we know, array count starts from zero in development in general but a more human friendly numbering starts from one. So that's why the placeholder is called ordinal position, which would return the error. The second task title is required. So it's not just the number, but also two and D second and D for the first, it will be one ST and so on. So new feature in minor Laravel 12 version. The next tip comes from myself again, and also from AI. So when working with AI and generating some scaffolding starter projects and demos, I noticed that when generating the model, it immediately generates quite often scopes and helper methods. Similar how you saw that already in this video in the Laravel IO roles, there's is admin and is something. So similarly, if I ask AI to generate a model with some functionality, then I often get code like this. So my advice and tip here is probably to do the same when you're coding manually. Think about what scope methods would you need for filtering. Think about what helper methods would make the code in controller and in blades more readable. So you wouldn't need to put where statements each time in each file, especially if this condition would be reusable in many places. Side note, if you're interested in my adventures and experiments with AI, I have a separate channel, AI Coding Daily. Just this morning at the time of shooting this video, I released Sonnet 4.5 first test. So I will link that channel in the description below as well. And you may subscribe for AI examples, but most of them with Laravel. The next tip comes from Wendell, who is very active recently sharing tips on Twitter. And this one is for rate limits for API look at the example and how practical it is. So you can protect your API with limits per minute, but configurable. For example, rate limit is dynamic based on the plan of user, or if the user doesn't have a plan, or if there is no logged in user in the request, then it falls back to 60 requests per minute. And also that limit is scoped by team ID if it exists from user. So this actually means 60 requests per minute per team or per IP address if there is no user. So this is a great example, not only of rate limiting, but practical usage for different use cases. And we'll finish this video with two more tips from myself. First is about making factory data more realistic. So for something like testing, again, I've been playing around with a lot of demos recently. And one of the demos was schedule of class of lessons. And if in your factories, you just do something like fake time, that time may be anything not realistic. So instead you may implement or you may ask AI to implement a more complicated logic, more realistic so that lessons would start at 8 a.m., finish also at certain hours and duration should be 30 minutes, 60 minutes or similar. And then the result in your testing process is much more realistic instead of having seconds here night time or something like that. This is particularly useful if you're showing the project for client for the first time, you can immediately see it realistic data. So the client would be more impressed with how the project works with realistic data simulated automatically instead of client spending that time and entering that manually record by record. And the final quick tip more like a reminder in the genre of 
whoever needs to hear this. So I often see unique validation in the Laravel validation in form requests or in controller, but do not forget to set unique in that case in the database as well, because maybe in the future that request would come not from the same controller, will not pass through the same form request for validation. It may be test, it may be terminal command, it may be job, it may be something like that. In the future, it may be some API by other developers. So the final frontier, the final validation should be always on the database level. Otherwise, you either get random errors or incorrect data in the database, which is even worse. So yeah, these were the tips for September. What do you think? Have you learned anything new? Or maybe you want to discuss one of the tips? Let's do that in the comments below as usual. And of course, subscribe to the channel to get such set of tips. Every month, I will continue that. And the next set for October will be published in the first days of November. That's it for this time and see you guys in other videos.